Thank you for joining us this week. We are Abundant Grace Church, and I am Bishop Ramon Di Maria, and I am the senior pastor of the church. For prayer or information concerning our ministry or donating to this ministry, please email me at abundant.grace at att.net. Our message this week is titled, Living Joyously. I will be reading from Psalms chapter 16 and verse 11. You will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. My beloved, do you know something that grieves you? I grieve that the world has believed a lie that God is mean and narrow. A killjoy who denies us our happiness. And even more tragic is that many Christians have fallen for this lie. Many walk around with sad countenances and sorrowful attitudes. What picture of Christianity does this present to the world? Have you believed the lie? Do you worry about having too much fun? Afraid that if you enjoy yourself, God will swoop down and zap you? Nothing could be further from the truth. You see, my beloved, God originally planned for our lives to be full of joy and free from sorrow. In the beginning, God created a man and a woman, and he placed them in the garden of sorrows, right? No. The garden of misery, right? No. He placed them in the garden of Eden. Eden is a Hebrew word transliterated as a garden of delight or a garden of pleasure. At the beginning of his plan for us, God created a garden of delight and pleasure. He put Adam and Eve there so that humans might share his joy. Though mankind disobeyed God, bringing sin and sorrow into the world, God didn't give up on his plan, but instead he gave us Jesus so that we might have another chance to live joyfully. Through his life, Jesus showed us the meaning of joy. While the Bible never says that Jesus laughed, we can safely surmise that he did. Furthermore, my beloved, Jesus wept in our place because he took on our sin and our guilt, and his sorrow became our joy. The shortest verse in the Bible is, Jesus wept. The second shortest is, rejoice evermore. Rejoice evermore. Can you accept that? Rejoice evermore. Jesus wept on our behalf so that we might experience his joy, the joy that God bestows on us. Jesus said in John 15, 11, these things I have spoken to you, that my joy may remain in you, and that your joy may be full. My beloved, it is very important to realize that through the sacrifice of Jesus, Jesus has made joy available to all the world. A question for you. Can the people around you see the joy of Jesus Christ in you? For if they do, they'll want some of it. So please allow God to instill a joyful attitude in you, no matter what challenges you may face in your walk with Christ. See, my beloved, Christianity carries in its heart the happiness of heaven. Let us pray. Father God, in Jesus' name, we seek your joy. We want to walk and live joyously. At times, we allow ourselves to believe a lie from Satan. That is why, at times, we fall short. But Lord, continue to remind us every day that in you is an abundance of joy. Because you show us the path of life. And in your presence is fullness of joy. Thank you for that joy. Thank you for bestowing joy upon us through your Son, Jesus Christ. Continue to remind us that there is joy, and we can enjoy that joy all the days of our life. No matter what we are facing, as we look to you, we will continue to walk in the fullness of joy. In Jesus' name, we praise you and thank you. Amen. My beloved, have a blessed, victorious, and joyful week in Jesus Christ.